Yeah, third question. Uh, Mr. LaRouche, uh, my name is Steve Crocker, and I'm here with Michigan's Chapter 11. And I want to thank you uh, for making a change in my life, because if it had not been for the power of your ideas at a critical time, I'd still be a long-haired anarchist smoking dope in a commune somewhere. <laughs> my question is this. Uh, in the early 70s, when I first became aware of your work, you were putting forward then the perspective of an inevitable crisis in the financial system. And you put forward a perspective for this organization that the population at the point of crisis would have a tendency to either go in the direction of fascism or to move in a direction of development-oriented policies such as represented by your work. And that the role of this organization at that point was to be the leadership cadre that would be able to intervene among the population and lead them uh, in the direction of development-oriented policies. Now, in that light, today the crisis is upon us and it's becoming increasingly more visible and apparent to everyone. And the clear beginnings of the mass-based fascist movement among the population are upon us in the form of the so-called patriot movement, including the militias, the sovereign citizen uh, movement, the elements of the libertarians, and so on. And my question is this, in, in that light, what is the proper tactical and strategic perspective of this organization toward these proto-fascist uh, formations that call themselves patriots, but which nevertheless are creating the kind of ferment that, like the new left in which you intervened, attracts some good people just because it, it appears at the moment that this is where something's happening, this is where someone might go if they're looking for the possibility of addressing their sense that something is wrong in the world, something's wrong in their nation. What should be the perspective of this organization? Should we approach these groups, and if so, in what manner? I, I understand that there's been some disagreement within the organization on that question, and I, I would like to see it clarified. Well, it may be some disagreement. I don't know much about the disagreement. The, take the populist movement. The problem of the populace is well known. The populist problem, essentially, is the one I addressed this morning. Is the populist is the person who says, and this was what happened to the American farmer when he lost his morality, when he, when he lost his possibility of progress. Is that they, they live in a niche, they have a niche morality. They're saying, I have my property, my land, my rights. Somebody has invaded it. This is supposed to work according to these rules. He believes implicitly in a social contract. He may be trying to renegotiate it, but he believe, believes in the principle of the social contract. Now, the problem with this fellow, and this goes with my attack on mathematics. And the reason I have to attack this mathematical mythology is because what is taught as mathematical economics today is deadly. And we cannot, we cannot develop the economy as long as people believe that systems analysis is a standard by which you can measure the competence of economic formulas. The other side is, the same thing applies on the other side to the social process. The characteristic insanity, which is actually stupidity of the populist, is the following. The populist does not believe that any of his own axiomatic assumptions about social relations are subject to criticism. He is a complete follower, and you'll get some of this tomorrow, in discussion of this fascist, this satanic fascist, von Hayek. And you will hear tomorrow an identification of the proof that proves to you that von Hayek is a self-proclaimed follower of a fascist cult which is called in England the Hellfire Club, to which von Hayek attributes all of his ideas, the idea of freedom. It comes from Bernard Mandeville. you hear all about it tomorrow. Bernard Mandeville, 
who was the founder of the 18th century Hellfire Clubs, who wrote a book called The Fable of the Bees, which has all the evil in old Hobb, Thomas Hobb, who was the homosexual lover of Francis Bacon and the student of Galileo, mathematics student of Galileo, from, who was the first to articulate a mathematical social theory on which all modern sociology is derived and all empiricism is derived and all bad physics is derived based on the teachings of Paolo Sarpi, who begat Galileo Galilei, who begat Thomas Hobbes as his mathematics student, who turned bad mathematics into worse social theory. And this was made famous and explicit by this guy Mandeville. So von Hayek is a self-professed devil worshiper, a Satanist. He says accurately the idea of free trade comes from this source. So free trade is Satanism. And that is not surprising to those who considered its effects. Right? Now the problem with the, with the farmer, the farmer says the federal government should do this, the federal government should do this. The populist says we should have gold. A, all this kind of stuff. And the problem is he doesn't attack the, he doesn't willing to consider the axioms, question any of axioms. He's a stubborn cuss. Not all populists are incurably insane. Many are. They, the, this particular phenomenon in many countries is responsible for fascist movements. It's the natural recruiting ground of fascist movements, which is why I've always been concerned about it. They come in all parts of the population. Your typical Wall Street yuppie is the worst kind of populist imaginable. Many of our suburbanites, yuppies, have become that sort of phenomenon. Different disguise, they don't wear farm clothing, or maybe who knows what they white where these days. But our, our job is essentially to see another side of this at the same time. The fact that you, as a child, if you have a decent education, can relive the greatest fundamental discoveries of the ancient Greek, say from the time of the origin of the, of the uh, School of Athens, of Plato's School of Athens, through people like Aristophanes and Archimedes and so forth, the fact that the child can re-experience in the child's own mind the act, mental act, that say an Aristophanes or an Archimedes or a Plato goes through in presenting a discovery, means that the child understands that you can overturn the universe in the sense of belief, that you can, with your mind, discover a principle which can be measured, whose accuracy can be measured which overturns the axiomatic assumptions of all previously existing mathematics and ideas. When the child realizes that they have in th this capacity, by doing this a number of times and learning, learning things this way, not learning from the back of the book, but learning by re-experiencing the act of discovery. When the child learns that, the child realizes there's something beautiful about the human mind as opposed to the rote learner. This creates a spirit of optimism. So the idea of, on the one side, fixed values of the populist and the rote learner are the same thing. Whereas the child who enjoys beauty, the child who enjoys creative music, not country music, but creative music, the guy, the guy who hates rock but may, will like the spirituals, this guy is manifesting two things, both a sense of creativity and a sense of optimism. The thing, the ingredient of the fascist is the combination of cultural pessimism combined with this stubborn fixed value system. Saying, this is the way life ought to be, these are my values, I stick to my values, I'm insisting that everybody else acts by my values, if they don't, I'll shoot them. Right? You're basic fascist. And so our job is to do two things, is to inspire to show that it is possible to change things. For example, what has happened when the United States helped Colombia reverse the situation on the drug traffickers, that changed the situation in Colombia from a hopeless one of despair into optimism. When the United States government, with all its dilly-dallying with the French, supported the Colossians and the Bosnians and pushed through with French support the air attacks 
against the uh, Chetnik uh, stronghold. You reversed a trend of pessimism and created optimism, among, even among American people. And the British tried to say it wasn't true all the way through, lied all the time. Right. So with two things, optimism, optimism by showing people they have minds, doing things which make them inspired and happy, showing them that it is possible to begin to change politics where you were giving up, that you can do something actually to influence something which is good, and secondly, to get over this crap of not learning, not learning new things, not learning new discoveries. Gene Roberts from the Detroit chapter, and I've been noticing uh, lately in the briefing the uh, Mexican organizers have been using uh, as uh, organizing some of the people in Mexico, um, saying that uh, we are not communists or we're not free traders or we're not statists, and that, uh, to my recognition or recollection, um, that's the first time I've seen the word statist used. And I was wondering what your definition of statist is and why we are not statists. Well, I'm a statist myself. I should have thought I made that clear. Well, the, the organizers in Mexico said we're not. I don't know. They, they, that's, they, they, you know, that's Mexico. I, I, I don't, I, I, may have to, I may have to talk to them if this keeps going. Well, but in I'm Michigan, a, a statist is a nasty word. So. I don't, I, no, it's not to me, it's not a nasty word. For example, every good thing that humanity has achieved in the past 600 years has been due to the state. The only problem we've had with the state is that somebody lets some rats get in it. The state is good. What is, when, look, you and I are born. We are small. We are weak. The institution which protects us immediately is the family, if we're allowed to have families, which is being outlawed in some, uh, I think the women's conference in Beijing is trying to outlaw it. Uh, but anyway, the family can function only with the protection of society, which is a more long-lived, more secure institution than the individual of the family. We rely upon a state based on good principles of law, self-governed by principles of law, so that we have the opportunity to do good and so that the good we do may be perpetuated to the advantage of the future. As we see the problems before us, there is no way that the problems of humanity are today are going to be solved by any institution but the state. And so if, if some of our people in Mexico are saying that they're not statist, unless they have some special meaning for that I don't know about, they're wrong. That's simple. We're for the state. We always have been. We just, we're just for cleaning it out of some things. That's all. 